three Azerbaijani truck drivers languishing in Georgia for 11th month. Three Azerbaijani truck drivers have been stuck at a customs office in Georgia's Batumi city for nearly 11 months now. The three drivers and another driver from Georgia were detained in April last year upon entering the territory of Batumi as the trucks they were driving contained military vests, something the drivers were unaware of. Thus, customs officers confiscated the driver's documents and banned them from leaving Georgia after they found military vests inside the sealed containers. The three Azerbaijani drivers told local media that they were unaware about the existence of military vests in the containers. We loaded the cargo in Istanbul, Turkey. We were told that the cargo contained sports goods, but turned out they were military vests. We were unaware of this. We couldn't have inspected whether these were military vests or sports vests. We crossed the border with Turkey and got detained in Georgia. We have been detained since April the 24th, 2023. We've been here for 10 months now. Nobody has helped us for 10 months. It's clear whom the cargo belongs to, where it would be delivered and which company the documents belong to. We haven't stolen anything. This situation has nothing to do with us. We have no fault. Nobody helps us or gives us any answers. One of the drivers, Elshad Husseinov, told local media. We have asked them to unload the cargo into the customs office and set us free. But nobody listens to us. Another truck driver, Rafael Abdulayev, said. The military vests had been sent by Turkey's Kara Boga company and were to be delivered to the Lana Group company in Kyrgyzstan. The drivers experienced no problems at customs office in Turkey. It should be noted that neither Lana Group Company nor Karaboga Company have made any inquiries about the confiscated products. Apparently, both companies knew in advance that they might experience problems with customs officers. However, it's the truck drivers who have been suffering due to this situation. The drivers spoke about the difficulties they have been experiencing since their detention by Georgia's customs officers. They have been sleeping in their trucks and had relied on help from local residents who provide them with food. The truck drivers said the Azerbaijani consulate in Batumi and the Azerbaijani embassy in Tbilisi have ignored their appeal for help. They once again asked the Azerbaijani government to help solve their problem and ensure that they are allowed to leave Georgia. Advanced Russian bombs capable of striking any Kharkiv corner regional governor. The Russian army attacked Kharkiv with the latest unified multi-purpose D-30 gliding bombs, the newly deployed UMPB. D-30SN bomb by Russia represents a significant threat to Kharkiv, capable of targeting any area within the city, the regional governor Ole Sinehubov said in a comment to public broadcaster Suspilne. Senehubov detailed the risks posed by this advanced weaponry. This bomb can reach any part of Kharkiv, any district. Sinehubov stated, emphasizing the wide-reaching impact of the weapon. Even communities in Kharkiv Oblast, depending on their proximity to the border, are at risk. The Russian military executed two airstrikes on Kharkiv's Shevchenko district using these bombs from SU-class aircraft, Sinehubov said. The UMPB D-30SN, an air-to-surface missile, has been adapted for precision guidance and ground attacks. The attacks were not simultaneous, Sinehubov explained. There was a notable interval between them with varied flight paths, suggesting these might have been test strikes aimed at locating our air defense systems. He detailed that the bombs were launched from different directions and originated from Belgorod Oblast in Russia, travelling distances of 72 to 74 kilometres to reach Kharkiv. Sinehubov noted a worrying trend in the evolution of Russian offensive capabilities, highlighting advancements in the range and design of these guided bombs, now capable of hitting targets up to 90 kilometres away. It appears to be a trial, potentially indicating future use, he said. Perhaps they were looking for our air defense systems to detect them. The munitions entered Kharkiv from different directions, one from the north and the other through Bohodukiv, and then lower from the western part of the city. In response to these threats, Sinehubov called for urgent measures to safeguard Kharkiv's population, including the construction of shelters, deployment of mobile shelters, and the development of an electronic warfare system to counter the aerial threats.
France wants foreign troops to reinforce Olympics security. The threat of terrorism is high. France has called on its international allies to help enhance security for the upcoming Olympic Games in Paris, AFP reported, citing sources in the government. According to the report, Paris has asked 46 nations to send 2,185 police reinforcements for the duration of the Games in order to take over tasks that require additional specialists. The French authorities have not yet confirmed that such a request was made, but Polish Defence Minister Vladislav kosiniak kamis announced on X that his country's armed forces would join the international coalition established by France to provide additional security at the Olympics. He didn't reveal the size of the contingent Warsaw plans to send, but noted that it would deploy K-9 units whose job will be to detect explosives and counteract terrorist activities. An interior ministry source told AFP that the request for reinforcements is a classic move for host countries ahead of the organization of major events. However, the news comes just days after Paris raised the terrorism threat level in the country to its highest level following the deadly attack in Moscow, which killed more than 140 people. In a press statement following the attack in Russia, French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal said that the threat of terrorism in France is real and strong, adding that the country's intelligence services have foiled 45 terror plots since 2017. He noted that France's current anti-terror security measures, part of the country's national security alert system called the Vigi Pirate Plan, will be tightened in the coming weeks, with security forces maintaining a more visible presence on streets and in front of possible targets such as government buildings, transportation infrastructure and schools. The Vidi Pirate Plan has been in place since 2015 when France faced a series of devastating terror attacks linked to Islamic State. They included the attack at the Bataclan Concert Hall, the Stade de France Stadium and drive-by shootings and suicide bombings across Paris. This year's Olympics will run from July the 26th to August the 11th. Around 45,000 French police and gendarmes, 18,000 troops and up to 22,000 private security guards are expected to work at the Games AFP reported, citing official figures.